Today is Pentecost Sunday, and once again, we are celebrating the birth of the church. We are celebrating when the Holy Spirit came and descended upon, upon the believers, upon the disciples. Acts 1 verse 4, Jesus said, while being together and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which he said, you have heard me speak. So Jesus said to his disciples, I do not want you to go and minister or do anything until you receive my Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came, it released power to the believers. Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus says, you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. So when the Holy Spirit came upon the believers, the Bible talks about how they began to speak in different tongues. If you go to Acts 2 verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled, that is diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout and God-fearing men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound was heard, a crowd gathered and they were bewildered because each one was hearing those in the upper room speaking in his own language or dialect. They were completely astonished, saying, Look, are not all of those who are speaking, these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears in our own language or native dialect? This is Pentecost. This is what happened on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came with fire, with power. Now, it is so important to understand what the power means. The Holy Spirit came to give disciples power to be able to minister to people. Power so that it wouldn't just be words coming out. It wouldn't be wor just words, but the words would have power on it, on the words. That miracles would be released because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, John 20, verse 19, I want you to go there. John 20, verse 19. This is before Pentecost happened, and this is before Jesus ascended to heaven. Jesus said, when, it's when he appeared to the disciples, he said, peace be with you. So this is when he first appeared to the disciples after appearing to Mary Magdalene. He appeared to all the disciples and he said, peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21, it says, so Jesus said to them again, peace to you as the father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit in that moment. But wait, we just read that, we just read that later on, after he appeared to them, in the time of several days, several weeks where he, he appeared to them and was still teaching them things, before he ascended back to heaven, before Pentecost happened and the Holy Spirit descended, he said, wait for the Holy Spirit. He said, you need to wait for the Holy Spirit. So 
what is the meaning of this when he says receive the Holy Spirit in that moment? This is showing us here the difference between when we receive the Holy Spirit when we give our lives to Jesus and, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us with fire, with power. These are two different occurrences. And much of the body of Christ doesn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even though it's so clear in the book of Acts, it says that the fire de descended upon every single one of the disciples and every single one of the disciples were speaking in different tongues. And, and even in the Great Commission, Jesus says, these are the things that you will do. You will heal the sick. You will lay your hands on the sick and they will get well. You will cast out demons. He also said, you will speak in different tongues. We see other, other examples in the book of Acts when, when the disciples were ministering. Peter one time was speaking, he was preaching, and it says the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. They were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. This, was, this is in Acts 10, verse 44. Acts 11 is another example. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as he did upon us at the beginning. Mm -hmm. At the beginning is talking about Pentecost, the beginning of the, of the church, the birth of the church, when the Holy Spirit descended with power. And I remembered the word of the Lord and how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's a baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is different from the receiving of the Holy Spirit. When you accept Jesus as Lord, you receive the Holy Spirit inside of you. But it is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of fire, which is a separate occurrence, which releases power to you. Power to minister and power to transform fire inside of you. There's a difference between the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is a greater amount of power that comes inside of you and enables you to be transformed, enables you to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, convicts you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a separate occurrence and it is very vital to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. This is what Pentecost is about. Pentecost isn't about just, just the beginning of the church, but it is about the baptism of fire when power came to the disciples because the disciples had been trained. They'd been with Jesus. He breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. But Pentecost is when power came to the church. After Pentecost happened, that's when we see the Acts Church. That's when we see the disciples operating in the power of God, walking by people, healing people with their shadows, casting out demons, even raising people from the dead as Peter raised a girl from the dead. All of this happened because the power of the Holy Spirit came with fire onto the believers, onto the disciples. I'm going to give you another example here. Acts 19, verse 2, it says, He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So he said, Into John's baptism. But then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were then baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Let's go back to verse 5 here. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
So that is the moment that they received Jesus and the Holy Spirit came inside. But there was a different moment when the baptism, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit was to come upon, upon them. It's a different occurrence for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. It keeps say, using this language of upon. The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you and then they spoke in tongues and then they prophesied. So then there was the power of God in them. The gifts of the Holy Spirit were activated. Prophesying, miracles, speaking in tongues. We have the baptism of, in, baptizing the name of Lord Jesus, receiving the Holy Spirit inside, and then a second occurrence, verse six, and when Paul had laid hands on them, this is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So, much of the body of Christ, when they think Pentecost, they think this is the beginning of the church, this is the Holy Spirit, but many do not know that it is speaking of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's when the Holy Spirit came with fire. It's when the church received power. The church needs power. Amen. Much of the body of Christ does not have the power of God in the church, but it is no true church, true kingdom of God without power. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Amen. After, after the, the tongues fell upon the people, the, after the, the fire fell upon the disciples in the upper room, they began speaking in different tongues. The first things that, that happens, they spill out into the streets. They're speaking in tongues and people around them who don't believe in Jesus, they notice the power of God. They notice the speaking in tongues. They're like, what's happening? Are these people drunk? That's what they asked. And Peter said, it's only nine in the morning. No, this is actually the power of God. Now, this, this power of God is what captured people's attention. The Bible talks about how after the people in the streets there were wondering what was going on, was like, are they drunk? And they were like, what's happening? I'm hearing my native tongue and I'm hearing God is good in my native tongue, but they don't know my native tongue. They're experiencing something supernatural. They're experiencing the power of God. And that touched them immediately. That captured them that captured their attention. That's what captured them to listen to Peter, Apostle Peter. Apostle Peter next mm -hmm. preaches the sermon that in result, 3,000 believers came, 3,000 people came to be believers, came to believe in Jesus from him preaching that message. But how did he capture their attention to hear the message? God moved in power, the speaking of tongues. This is, this is the power of God. The, three, the thousands of people didn't come to Jesus before the power of God was there. The power of God was needed to bring people to the church, to be captivated, mm -hmm. to ca capture their attention, to touch the heart, to touch the hearts of people. And Peter then shares this, this message. He shares this, this simple gospel message. He shares simply the story of Jesus. And he says, you guys have crucified him and killed him, but he rose on the third day and now he is Lord. He just simply shared this simple gospel story. And immediately after he shares the gospel story to them, after their attention was so captivated by the power of God, after the message, they immediately say, Acts 2.37, this is Passion Translation. When they heard this, these are the people, when they heard this, they were crushed and realized what they had done to Jesus. Deeply moved, they said to Peter and the other apostles, what do we need to do, brothers? Peter replied, Repent and return to God, and each one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus, and your sins will be removed. Then you may take hold of the gift of the Holy Spirit. As we go on, Peter says, be, be, 
He preached to them and warned them, be rescued from the wayward and perverse culture of this world. Those who believed the word that day numbered 3,000. They were all baptized and added to the church. A sense of awe, verse 43, a sense of awe was felt by everyone and many wonders and signs and testing miracles were taking place through the apostles. So let's go back to 37 here. When they heard this, they were crushed and realized what they had done to Jesus. Deeply moved, they said to Peter and other apostles, what do we need to do, brothers? Can we take a moment to realize how powerful that was? That in just a matter of minutes, we have regular people who had one day was crucifying Jesus and couldn't be bothered to, to love him and see the truth. And in one moment, with, with him preaching with power, Peter preaching with power, all of a sudden, it says, when they heard this, they were crushed and realized what they had done to Jesus. Deeply moved, they said to Peter and the other apostles, what do we need to do? And they immediately repented and gave their lives to Jesus. Immediately, just like that. Why? Because of the power of God. That is why. If Peter did not have the power of God in him as he was preaching, these were anointed words coming from him. If he didn't have the power of God, this would not have happened. That's why Jesus said, wait for my power. Amen. Wait for the baptism of fire. Wait for it. That's where you will see the results. That's when I can touch people. That's when people will come to me. You need the power. I want you to think about this scenario right here. How powerful this scenario is. That in just a matter of minutes, upon witnessing the power of God, something supernatural, people talking in their native tongue, acting drunk, what is going on? This is supernatural. Then hearing the anointed word of God that had power on it coming from Peter, they were immediately convicted and repented. The power of God caused them to be convicted and caused them to repent. In order for conviction to come to people, to happen to people, the power of God is needed. The power of God coming from anointed vessels is what convicts people. The word, the word will not convict unless it carries the power. What this world needs is the power of God. Amen. That is the answer. The answer is Jesus, but not the Jesus that, that many have portrayed to be, a powerless Jesus. Mm. Not that fake Jesus. Amen. The true, real Jesus who comes in power. Amen. That is is the answer to the world's problems. Amen. The world needs change. America needs change. Amen. There is evil happening in this world. There are people that are possessed. Mm. It has been exposed like never before. These past couple months, it has been exposed evil that is happening in this world. It is being exposed that there are people who are possessed. Mm. We are dealing with spiritual matters here. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Mm. We do not wrestle trying to get people to change. You are mean. You are evil. You are bad. No! It is the spirits behind that we are at war with. Amen. It is the spirit behind that man who murdered George Floyd. It is a demonic spirit behind him. It is a spirit. There is a spirit of racism in this country that needs to be removed. Amen. There is a spirit of oppression. There is a spirit of superiority. There is a spirit of pride. And there are many other evil spirits. There's spirits of people wanting to control. Mm. There are many other bad spirits out there that come from the devil. Mm. And, and the world is wondering, what can we do? We've tried many things. Years have passed. Why isn't there change? 
because we are dealing with spiritual roots that have to be uprooted. Amen. We can you cannot force somebody to change. You can't say don't be mean to this person. Don't hate this group of people. You cannot do that. You can't there's not going to be any change by just telling someone, by just putting laws into place. The power of God is needed to remove the spirits behind people. Yes. It is the power of God. If we want real change, we need the power of God. Yes. We need to be serious about the power of God. Yeah. We don't want band-aids. We don't want the devil to hide. Mm-hmm. No, we want, we want these spirits removed. Yes. There is a mass deliverance that must take place Mm -hmm. in this nation. Deliverance. But we need the power of God for that to happen. That is the answer. Jesus did not come to this earth and, and say, You're doing it. You're really bad. You're evil. You're doing it wrong and try to force his way. He came and demonstrated his kingdom. He came with love. He came with power. And as people encountered him, they changed from the inside out. That is the key for the world to know Jesus, the true Jesus, who comes in power so that the inside of them can be changed, so that they can be delivered, so that they can receive conviction, so that they can choose to repent. What we see here, this is powerful. It says, when they heard this, Acts 2 verse 37, when they heard this, they were crushed and realized what they had done to Jesus. They murdered him. They beat him. They treated him as, he, as if he was dirt, as if he wasn't human. They treated him as if they were so much better and so much more powerful than him. Mm. And in one moment, because of anointed vessels of God who were serious about doing the work of God and respected God's power and the way in which he wanted to move, because they were obedient and preached the gospel unashamed with power. In one moment, these murderers were crushed and realized what they had done. In one moment, they were convicted. In one moment of encountering the power of God, they were convicted and they transformed completely. They repented completely. They gave their lives to Jesus. They murdered no more. They no longer saw other people as less than themselves. The opposite occurred. They started seeing people with Jesus' eyes. They started seeing people as better than themselves. As Jesus says, he says in his word, you should view others as more important than you are. They started seeing people in that way. They did a 360 Transformation because of the power of God at work. We see this all throughout the Bible. We see this with Saul, Saul who became Paul. Saul was a murderer. Saul thought he was so much better than the Christians he was persecuting. He thought he was so right, and he think he, he thought he was justified to murder the Christians, the followers of Jesus. And we see a real change take place in him. What a change. Jesus appeared to him out of love. Jesus encountered him with power, and in one second... He, he does the same 360 that we see, that we saw from these, these first believers on the day of Pentecost. He no longer stops murdering the Christians, stops looking at, at himself as so much better than everybody else, 
but he all of a sudden humbles himself completely and gives his life to serving Jesus. Look what God did through his life. God transformed this murderer who hated people, who was doing so much evil, who was possessed with the spirit of superiority, of murder. He delivered him in a moment with his power, and he transformed him to be a powerful vessel of him. Now millions, billions, trillions probably, have been brought to Jesus because of Paul's life. We're still reading about him in the Bible today. Many people opened the Bible and they read one of his letters and they gave their life to Jesus <laughs> because he was obedient. Mm -hmm. This is what God wants to do. Amen. This is the change that he wants to bring. If he did it back then, why can't he do it now? Amen. Oh, God wants this change more than you want this change. America are crying out like never before for change and this is so good because people are now having the compassionate heart of Jesus this passionate heart of seeing evil and wanting it gone and, and no longer being lukewarm people going about their lives but actually caring that their brothers and sisters are being killed or suffering or, or being oppressed and they're demanding change this is God at work right now. Amen. This is God at work right now. He's preparing hearts, getting them out of their lukewarm, oh, it doesn't affect me, so I don't need to worry about it. I, need to, I don't need to be part of a change. He's getting people, he's getting us out of that. Amen. And he's preparing us to see there is evil in the world. Do you want your brothers and sisters oppressed? Do you want them to die? Or do you want, do you, do you want there to be change? And people are responding, I want change. And they're wondering what the answer is. And God says, this is the answer right now. Amen. I've given you the answer. It is my power. The church is not how it's supposed to look right now. The church does not have the power of God by and large. There cannot be the Saul to Paul conversion without the power of God, without the power of God, who knows how many people Saul would have continued to murder? Who knows? God wants to transform this whole nation by his power. He wants to, he wants to bring Esther's into this nation. He wants to bring people of, of certain power who are who officers like a Cornelius, mm. you know, Cornelius, a Roman officer who was in charge of other soldiers of other of other officers, people in uniform. He gave his life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I believe that there's there's people who who are possessed with horrible spirits and they're so much hate. And I believe that just as God did in the Bible, as he changed, as he transformed Saul, I believe he wants to, to remove those people out of those places. Mm. Touch them with his power. Transform them completely. You know, Apostle Paul was such an amazing minister of God because he saw, he saw the mercy of God and he saw, he saw how evil he was and how possessed he was. And God opened his eyes. He blinded him and he opened his eyes and, and it fueled him with such passion. He, he, because he saw the mercy of God, he didn't deserve for his eyes to be open. He didn't deserve to be a minister of God. But God had that mercy upon him and, and it, it made him such a powerful vessel of him. I, I, I have this hope. This is what God wants to do. He wants to do this today. He wants to turn people who have evil spirits inside, deliver them by the power of God and transform them to be like Apostle Paul's in society, Amen. in the police force, in government, Amen. in all sorts of workplaces, in the business world and entertainment. We see Joseph's, Joseph who had influence upon the most powerful person in Egypt, Joseph, 
He had the, the Pharaoh listened to everything Joseph said. God wants to raise up Joseph's. God wants to raise up Daniel's. Daniel's had influence mm. to the most powerful person as well. Mm. God doesn't want just, just to use the people in the church. Mm. This is how he changes the world. Amen. He wants to bring David's. David was a king, a place of government leadership, the highest leader in the government. David was a king. David was a man after God's own heart. If God did this in the Bible through all of these people, why won't he do it today? Amen. This is what God wants to do. This is how the change will come. Hallelujah. So we need to first start in the church, in the body of Christ. It's, it's a concerning thing when the power of God is not in the church. I mean, this is why the church, by and large, has gotten a bad name over the years. Condemning, judging people. Because... There's spirits inside that remain because there's no power of God to deliver them. Mm. People have, there, there are people who have spirits of racism that are, call themselves Christians and are going to church. Mm. There are people that have spirits of pride that are in the church. Mm. There, are, there are people with all sorts of spirits inside the church. Mm. And you know what? A scheme of the devil over America is to, is to demonize the power of God. It's a spirit he has over America. The devil has tried really hard to keep the body of Christ blinded in this fact. The body of Christ, by and large, thinks that we don't need the power of God, that we don't need miracles, that miracles aren't for today. And he demonizes miracles. He, mm -hmm. he, he whispers things into people's ears saying, like, that's not God, that's creepy, that's weird. That's, that's not of God. That's m magic, that's witchcraft or something. He, he whispers these things, scares people, makes them fearful of the power of God. This is a strategy. It's a specific spirit that the devil has over America. So because that's a strategy that the devil has over America, over the body of Christ in America, the devil's strategy is also to hide. So we have lots of people in the church, a lot of Christians that have spirits that are possessed even, but they have real spirits that are just there and they're kind of hiding. I mean, they manifest sometimes, but a lot of people don't even know the spirits that some people have mm -hmm. because the, the devil wants to hide and make people think that everything's fine and we're all great Christians, perfect. <laughs> and we don't need the power of God. That's what the devil's try, been trying to do. So that's why we see such a big problem today in the world um, because the church is supposed to be leading this change. And how can the church lead this change when there hasn't been change in the church. Amen. When the evil that we see out in the church is actually operating in hearts of people in the church, mm -hmm. too. When there's no difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to lead this change. And when Jesus came, it's amazing. Like, the, 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 the disciples were like, can you... Can you fix this problem? Like the, the, the Romans are oppressing us and everything. And, you know, but Jesus was just, he was so focused on, on, on bringing his kingdom and he knew everything would be worked out. You know, he knows that as long as the power of God is here, this is, this is the key. And so this is where God wants the focus to be. He wants us to know when we can accept the power of God when we can cherish the power of God, cherish the Holy Spirit, allow him to move and be used by him, invite people to the place where the power of God really is, make this revival to grow, 
God has the rest taken care of. When we focus on the work of God, when we allow him to move how he wants, he's going to bring those people. He's going to bring certain powerful people in the world to the church. You don't know. It's amazing how we're all connected in this world and how God has such an amazing plan. There, will be, there could be someone that you invite to church and they invite somebody to church and that person happens to be a leader somewhere in society. But because you had been, you had focused on serving God and giving your life to him and, and honoring his power and his presence, not playing games anymore, mm. but because you focused on that and you were obedient and you followed his leading, all of a sudden, little by little, there's change in society. Little by little, God starts putting people in leadership like Esther's and Cornelius's and David's and Apostle Paul's. Little by little, there's change in the entire nation. This deliverance isn't going to happen overnight, but the only way the deliverance will happen is if we get serious about revival, serious about the power of God, serious about giving ourselves to him to be used by him so we can bring the harvest in. Amen. We need you laborers to bring the harvest in. We need these this world to know the power of Jesus. That's how this nation will change. That's how this deliverance will take place. So, may you have such respect for his spirit. May you allow him to have his way in you. May you hunger and crave for the power of God. We can't be silent about his spirit. We can't be silent about the power of God. The change has to begin in the church. It has to begin in the church. We have to invite the Holy Spirit to come. When the, the disciples were in the upper room there's a couple things that there were some things that they were doing and that's what welcomed the holy spirit to come and this is god's direction for you today because today you've learned we've all been asking what is the answer to this change there's change that needs to take place in this nation we've all been asking that and god has released that answer and it's a sure it's a definite answer today and it's his plan. There's a reason he, is, he even exposed everything as he has because it's part of his plan to, to receive the answer. He's released the answer today. It is his power that has been missing, but it is coming now because Amen. revival is now. Amen. So what is our first step now? What do we need to do? We need to do what the first disciples did in the upper room. We need to welcome his spirit. Amen. We got to lead this. There's got to be somebody who's going to lead this revival. There's going to be got to be somebody who leads this change. God's calling you to this high call of being like the original disciples. So we can release the power of God for the first time in this generation. Yes, this nation, this world has not experienced his power by and large, but God is doing something new right now. He is bringing like a new Pentecost where it is now going to be the, the, the new normal for the church that we would have the power of God, that it wouldn't be a minority anymore for churches to have the power of God. It wouldn't be a rare thing anymore. This is what God's doing. So what did the disciples do? The Bible says in Acts 1 verse 14, all of them were united in prayer, gripped with one passion, interceding night and day. They were gripped with one passion. What was that one passion? to see the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus had made them. 
What was that promise? Well, we read in the Gospels when Jesus was with them, how he, how he shares with them, you will do the things that I did in greater. You will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. You will speak in new tongues. You will receive my spirit. I will be with you always. You will cast out demons. You will raise the dead. You will preach the gospel with power. You see, Jesus made them all of these promises. So they weren't surprised when the tongues, when they started speaking in tongues, when the fire came. They were actually gripped with passionate expectancy. They wanted to see Jesus' promise come to fulfillment. That is what they were gripped with, the passion that they were gripped with. The Amplified Version, it says, all these with one mind and one purpose were continually devoting themselves to prayer. They were one mind and one purpose in this. They were united. They had one mind, one purpose, gripped with one passion. And this was what Jesus had promised them. Not excluding anything that Jesus had promised them, but open and excited and devoted to what Jesus had promised them. That's what we have to do. We need to be gripped with this one passion to speak in new tongues to heal the sick, to see demons be cast out of people, to see signs and wonders, to see the power of God. We have to be gripped with this one passion. It's not good enough to, be, to, be, to have the passion just for people to know Jesus, generally, because a lot of people have that passion but when they mean that, they mean, I want people to receive Jesus the way, the way I did, without power. Mm. There's a lot of, everyone in the body of Christ, all, we all want people to know Jesus, but many people are divided on what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to be united with, what, with how God wants it to look like. Amen. Not in the way maybe you did traditionally, but the way that God wants to introduce people to him with power that they may know the full him. This is what we must be gripped with passion, with one passion. We have to reject any kind of skepticism or fear or lukewarm. May we choose to be passionate about this. May we choose to be passionate to see the power of God, to be used by God in power, to see a change in the church. May we, be, may we choose this passion. May we choose to be united in this. When we are united in this, that is when it will happen. That's when God will come in power because that's what happened with the disciples. They were all gripped with one passion, devoted to prayer, devoted to seeking God continually, devoted to being focused on him and his work, mm -hmm. not just going to church on Sundays and living your life the rest of the, the week. When they were devoted to prayer, it wasn't looking, it doesn't mean like this religious prayer, like they're not doing anything, they're just sitting at home praying all the time, but it meant that wherever they were going, they were so focused on Jesus and they were so focused on his work and for his will to be done and to be used by him and continually passionate about the promise to be fulfilled and the power to come. That's how we got to be. This is what God wants to release the greatest revival that we have ever experienced, that mankind has ever experienced. But this is the way. We have to do what the disciples did and be united in this, wanting God to do 
the miraculous and come in power. Mm. Hallelujah. John 17, verse 21, Jesus says, I pray for them all to be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to be one with us so that the world will recognize that you sent me. For the very glory you have given me, I have given them, so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. You live fully in me, and now I live fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity, and the world will be convinced that you've sent me. For they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love that you have for me. The world will know that Jesus exists, that he is their Lord, that he loves them, when we are united. When we are united in this mission, when we are united with what God wants to do, to come in power. When, when I first received um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I changed completely. When I received his fire, before I, I, I was selfish, before I wanted to be selfless, I wanted to put others before me, I wanted to be on fire for God, I wanted to surrender to him, I wanted to, but I, I couldn't, I didn't. It was when I received the baptism of fire, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that in one moment, I repented. In one moment, I decided to surrender my entire life to Jesus. From there, all this transformation began in me. All of a sudden, I was able, I was able to now be selfless. I was able to put people before me. I wasn't before, but now I was able to. Now I was able to, 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 to be convicted with something that wouldn't please God, where I knew it wasn't pleasing God. I transformed so greatly. I, I could start to see people as how Jesus sees them. I started seeing people differently. I started seeing them and seeing they are God's beloved children. I want to be a vessel of him. I, I started wanting, desiring to be a vessel of him. I started forgetting my whole life when I received the power of the Holy Spirit, mm. the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is when this occurred. And I was a Christian my whole life and I wanted all these things. I wanted to be selfless. I wanted to surrender. I truly did, but I needed the power. Mm. So this change, this deliverance has to take place in the church first. God wants to deliver you from selfishness. God wants to deliver you from pride. Some of you have spirits of racism or spirits of superiority that God wants to free you from. If you can receive the power of God, if you can receive the baptism of fire, you will receive that same conviction. You will, you will receive the empowerment to repent. You will receive Jesus' eyes and Jesus' heart, the ability to surrender to him, just like the original, the very first believers did. You will receive that in one moment right now. I see God is doing this right now. Amen. I see God is going to release his fire in a moment. Some of you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And some of you are going to receive a fresh fire right now. And I see that in one moment, as, I, as it happened to me, as I had a total transformation, a total repentance, a total move to surrender. In one moment of receiving the fire, just as these people did that we read about in the Bible on Pentecost, God is going to do that to you today. I see right now. I see right now. You've been crying out for change in this world. Maybe you have you've saw an issue with your heart and you wish that it would be removed, but it hasn't been. You needed the power of God and you are going to receive it right now with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands right now. God is going to touch you right now in power. You're going to receive his fire. Just surrender to him right now. The disciples were in the upper room. They were all in one accord. They were not focused on anything but Jesus. They hungered for him. They hungered for him to have 
his way with them and that is what made him to have his way with them so in the same way surrender right now to jesus allow him to do what he wants to you allow him to have his way in your body from your toes to your tongue every part of your body allow him to just have have his way have his way in your heart hallelujah thank you jesus lift your hands right now Oh, Father, how we love your spirit, how we honor your spirit, God. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Jesus. I thank you for touching your people right now. I thank you, Father, that the change that this nation has been crying out for in this past week, in these past few days, I thank you, God, that you are beginning to answer it right now with this drastic transformation that's coming in hearts right now by the fire of your spirit, God. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do right now. Thank you for your fire, Jesus. I release the baptism of the Holy Spirit to you right now. Receive his fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. Amana, thank you, Jesus. Allow him to take over. Allow him to have his way with you right now. I see some of you are being overtaken by his spirit right now, even being moved to the ground, moved on your knees right now. Some of you right now are feeling his, the heavy presence of God pressing you down. Just allow him to have his way. God is doing a work in you right now. Allow him. Allow him. Let his fire transform you, refine you, turn your heart. Allow him right now to take over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you that you have received the gift of tongues for the first time, just keep speaking right now. You felt God overtake your, your tongue. Just keep speaking. Allow him. Allow him. Just keep surrendering. Keep surrendering. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. Keep praying. When we pray in the spirit, we are praying directly to the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about how when we pray in the spirit, we sharpen our spirit. We sharpen our spirit man. We make our spirit man more powerful than our carnal man. When we pray in the spirit, we are praying God's will to be done. When we are praying in the spirit, it's a surrender where our mind is not involved at all. We are surrendering our mind. We are surrendering our understanding. We are allowing God to have his way. The foolish things that confound the wise, we are allowing we are allowing ourselves to be world, in the world's way foolish for God to have his way. This is glorifying to God when we can honor his presence, when we can honor his spirit in this way. This is such intimacy with him, precious intimacy. When you pray your spirit, man, directly praying to, to, to God. This is intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I see God delivering you right now. I declare deliverance upon you right now. I declare deliverance. Spirit of pride, get out in Jesus' name. Spirit of racism, get out in Jesus' name. Spirit of racism, get out of this nation. Spirit of oppression, spirit of superiority, of pride, get out of this nation in Jesus' name. I release humility, the heart of Jesus, the humble heart of Jesus. Come into every heart watching. Come into this nation right now in Jesus' name. I deliver you, I declare, be free of addictions right now in Jesus' name. Pornography addiction, get out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are free. In Jesus' name, alcohol addictions, 
get out in Jesus' name. You are free. Drug addictions, get out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, sex addictions, get out in Jesus' name. You are free. You are free. I see God is transforming your eyes right now. God is giving you his eyes. God needs people to lead in this world who has his eyes, who see people as he sees them. Oh, God is doing this right now. He is giving you his eyes. Receive his eyes. Receive his eyes to see his people. God is releasing a heart to love his people. You are receiving the heart of Jesus right now. Receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just pray to Him right now. Pray to Him. Forget about the world. Focus on the Holy Spirit right now. He is with you. He is with you right now. You are speaking to Him directly. Soak in his presence. Honor his presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is healing people right now. Receive healing of any sickness that you have right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. I see God touching your family members out there, family members you've been concerned about, people who have addictions, people who have turned from God. God is touching them right now. He is touching them right now. He is freeing them right now. God says he has heard your prayers. There's somebody out there right now who has been praying for their son day and night. Praying, praying and praying, praying and praying. God has heard your prayers. God is taking care of your son. He is taking care of him. He is safe. He is protected. He has heard your prayers and he has moved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I speak peace to this nation. I speak peace to this city. I declare that schemes of the devil to steal, kill, and destroy must end now. Spirit of destruction, spirit of lawlessness, get out in Jesus' name. Spirit of peace, invade this city, invade this nation. Spirit of hope, come upon this city, come upon this nation. Thank you, Jesus. We declare light be to this nation, light be to this city. Revival is now, we declare to this nation, revival is now to this city. There is a turnaround in this Pentecost, as there is a turnaround, as there is a turnaround, as the world knew the light of the world from that day, by the thousands and thousands and thousands, may that happen in this city, in this nation, today, today. Hallelujah, and I declare we will be back in church soon. I declare God is making a way. I open up the doors, and I open up the doors across the nation. I thank you, Jesus, for opening up doors. I thank you, Father, for your favor. And I declare the spirit of fear to get out of this nation. I declare people, people, people to be free of the spirit of fear. And to be gripped with a passion of revival for God's power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.